in a village located in the vast savanna, there lived a man named Chifokoyo. With his silver hair and piercing gaze, Chifokoye was loved and respected by the villagers as a sage of unmatched wisdom. They sought his counsel for matters both everyday things and intense ones. But it was in matters of the heart that his guidance was most sought after. Couples from far and wide will make the long journey to Chifokoye their hearts heavy with the burdens of disagreements and conflict. They sought Chifokoye's counsel, believing in his ability to mend the rugged bonds of matrimony with his gentle words and sage advice. With great wisdom and warm heart, he will fondly start his counseling sessions with wise sayings. If love is a sickness, patience is the remedy. The quarrel of lovers is the renewal of love. Do not treat your loved one like a swinging door. You are fond of it, but you push it back and forth. He resolved big and small issues between couples who would come to him quarreling, but leave hugging and smiling at each other, attesting to his wise counsel that love is never lost, but only kept. But unbeknownst to the villagers, behind Chifokoye's kindly facade lay a darkness, a darkness born of desire and deceit. He used his position of authority to pray upon the vulnerable women who sought his guidance, taking advantage of their trust for his own selfish gain. At first, whispers of Chifokoye's discretions fluttered through the village like dry leaves on a gentle breeze. But as time passed, the whispers grew louder until they became a deafening chorus of suspicion and outrage. Yet, blinded by their respect for the elder, the villagers chose to turn a blind eye to his transgressions, convinced that his wisdom outweighed his sins. But fate has a way of revealing the truth, and Chifokoye's deceit could not remain hidden forever. One fateful night, he succumbed to his desires and forcefully lay with a very beautiful young lady named Chichi that had come for his counsel concerning her young marriage. He betrayed the trust she had placed in him in the most unforgivable way. She knew that no one would believe her if she told them the truth. And after all, if she said the truth, being a married woman, that would be the end of her family. So Chichi decided to keep quiet and let things take their course. As dawn broke, a sense of horror descended upon the village, as if the very earth itself recoiled at the abomination that had occurred. Unbeknown to Chifokoyi, Chichi was actually his long-forgotten daughter from one of his escapades with the village women that came to sought for his counsel. The gods, outraged by Chifokoyi's betrayal, placed a curse upon the land, a curse that would bring ruin and despair to all who dwell within its boundaries. The river that was source of water for the entire village became darkened with blood and pungent smell came from the water. Animals could no longer use the water from the stream and neither could the villagers. The plants started drying on their farms and slowly by slowly, a village that had never known hunger could now no longer feed its people. Animals began to die and curses were everywhere on the land. The land that had fresh atmosphere was now dull and full of a foul smell. Word went round and everyone started speculating of what could have caused the bad omen. Witch doctors and medicine men were summoned. Sacrifices were made to the gods, but nothing was forthcoming. Days passed and became months, and things moved from bad to worse. 
Chichi by now was very heavy with child. A child that was thought to be a blessing as she was married to the village seer, the eyes of the gods. Chichi being married to the village seer made it automatic that her offspring will be the next seer of the land now that her husband, the eyes of the gods, was now too old and she was the only woman among the three wives of the seer that was now blessed with child. Desperate to lift the curse and restore harmony to their beloved village, the villagers convened to seek a solution. Through ancient rituals and intense prayers, they beseeched the gods for forgiveness, offering sacrifices of precious treasures and blameless calves in a desperate bid for redemption. But the gods remained silent, their wrath unforgiving and unyielding. Amid all this, as the saying goes, time waits for no man. Chichi's husband, the eyes of the gods, lost his battle for his life. And on the same night, Chichi's water broke and the child was coming. The village midwives were called to assist Chichi in bringing the next year with all hope that this will now be the beginning of restoration as God could not allow their own to come in a season of suffering and despair. Minutes grew to hours and the childbearing moved from a hopeful event to a fight for life. The midwives exchanged shifts as the process moved to days, the village was at a standstill with the dead body of the village seer and a stalled childbirth in the same home. Confusion grew and the worst had to be done. The king was required to visit the deity by himself and this was considered as one of the highest form of sacrifice and he was to be accompanied by ten village virgins. Word went round the village that all the virgins be presented to the palace for a ritual before embarking on the long journey. To ensure a successful ritual, it needed the ladies to be pure virgins with no history of adultery in their bloodline. The virgins were to strike the ground with a stick, and during this dry season, a spring of water would splash from the ground signifying purity of the bloodline and an indication of there being no adultery in their bloodline as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. None was forthcoming. It was then that Chief Okoye's betrayal was revealed to all, plunging the village into anger and despair. In their darkest hour, the villagers turned to the elders for guidance, seeking a path to salvation amid the chaos and confusion. After much deliberation, it was, it was decreed that only one pure virgin, untainted by the sins of her forefathers, could serve as a sacrifice to appease the gods and leave the curse that had befallen the land. And so, with heavy hearts and tear-stained eyes, the young maidens of the village stepped down. Only one found worthy offering herself as a willing martyr in a desperate bid to save her people from impending doom. The day of the sacrifice came, and the king with the one virgin went to the deity. The gods were kind on them and revealed that on that same day, another child was being given birth to, whom the gods were pleased and had anointed as the next eyes of the gods. Chief Okoye was banished from the land, and since then, marriage counseling to the ladies was made to be a duty of the old women of the village. Never again were matters of the heart for the ladies left in the hands of the village men. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to support our channel, like, comment, and share. Bye.